The first half of 2022 was very challenging for financial markets. There are a number of reasons for this. One has been inflation across most of the developed world and many emerging economies, inflation has been very high. High inflation has been driven by very high energy prices, um, but also because policies put in place early in the post-pandemic recovery uh, were larger than were necessary. Unfortunately, we don't think that that macro backdrop is likely to improve meaningfully in the second half of the year. Uh, we sort of currently think that a recession in 2023 across most of the advanced world and many emerging economies is more likely than not. That recession is not priced into assets today, particularly given the rally in some risk assets over the past month. On top of that, um, we've had um, a number of sort of geopolitical shocks that are also sort of challenging the outlook. Um, the war in Ukraine, of course, uh, is one of the things that's been driving inflation sort of higher, particularly through food prices and energy prices and natural gas prices for Europe. Uh, and then we've also sort of seen a sort of a further deterioration uh, in the relationship between the United States and China. So all of these have sort of meaningful implications for the outlook for sustainability. The war in Ukraine which has obviously sort of pushed energy prices up very high and has caused a cost of living sort of crisis in many economies, is causing a lot of countries to sort of think very carefully about the trade-off uh, between energy security. Now, it is the case that over the medium to long term, um, doubling down on the energy transition, accelerating the energy transition, um, can actually improve energy security because it means the countries are less dependent on fossil fuel imports. But in the short term, uh, they're sort of facing these sort of shortages, these sort of higher prices. And so some countries um, have been giving green lights to new fossil fuel related projects. However, it's really important to recognise that not all of the drivers um, that relate to sustainability have been adverse in recent months. In fact, there have been some quite positive developments. We are still continuing to see that in most economies, investment in renewable and low fossil fuel intensive energy technologies has been proceeding sort of quickly and more quickly than fossil fuel intensive projects. We've seen some important legislative gains. So for example, in the United States, and this caught markets by surprise, the Biden administration did finally manage to secure um, passage of a bill uh, to address climate change more comprehensively um, through a range of tax incentives and direct expenditures uh, that, uh, that most analysts sort of think will accelerate the progress around decarbonisation in the United States and certainly faster than had been previously anticipated. Um, China um, continues to make really rapid sort of gains uh, in the progress of transportation decarbonisation in particular, so its electrical vehicle sector uh, is the fastest growing in the world. And of course, sort of regulators sort of are keeping their eye on the long-term prize. Uh, so we're sort of seeing sort of further progress in implementation of the SFDR regulations. So for us in, as investors, we look at three key themes. Those three themes are achieving net zero, promoting a fairer society, and addressing some of the major natural capital issues that we face. Now, out of those themes, climate change has been a big focus and some think that we're reaching, reaching saturation point. But we as investors still need to think about the climate risk facing our portfolios. And we need to start thinking about how we embed data and tools into our systems to make sure that we understand what the risks are that we're facing. For fixed income, there's some real opportunities for our clients. We have climate bonds, uh, and infrastructure debt that is allocating capital and investing in solutions that can enable us to support promoting a cleaner and fairer society. So the things that investors need to look out for over the next six months is a focus on biodiversity. We have a big conference coming up towards the end of the year in China, and also the COP conference out in Egypt uh, in November. Investors need clarity 
over being able to allocate capital effectively to help contribute both to these goals uh, and also to the fiduciary duty that we have to our clients. We're seeing an increase in regulation in all the corners of the world, from developed markets through emerging markets. In addition, sustainable investing is increasingly polarized in countries like the US, where various states uh, are naming sustainable investment as a woke agenda, and other states are suggesting that the investment industry is not doing enough to address things like climate change. We've been doing a lot of thinking about this in, in the multi-asset uh, team, and we've, we've come up with a number of ways to, to, to make our portfolios uh, more defensive, uh, to, to um, make them more resilient to, to a potential uh, recession. The first is, is sort of to, to think about economic sectors, uh, think about themes, and think about which, of, which, which sectors and themes will be most, most resilient. Um, and, and a very clear conclusion uh, is, is the, the renewable energy uh, space, the, 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 the renewable power generation. And if you look at all sort of history of, of recessions, uh, the, the equity sector that performs best going into a recession is utilities. So demand for, for electricity uh, is, is one of the most resilient uh, parts of the economy uh, as, as you go into a downturn. The second reason for, for being enthusiastic about re renewable power is, is the very high power prices we're seeing, uh, particularly in, in Europe. Now, these high power prices are, 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 are really bad news for, for consumers, but uh, they're actually quite good news for power generators because the electricity price is very high. And so if you're selling electricity into the market, wind power, solar power into the market, you're getting a very high uh, price for your product. Uh, and, and that is supporting uh, the, the, the revenues of, uh, of these companies. Um, and the, the third uh, reason uh, for being uh, enthusiastic is, is public policy support. So in Europe, uh, clearly uh, the German government, other governments in Europe have realized that it was a major error to depend so heavily uh, on Russian gas for energy supply. And so there's a really significant shift away from, uh, from, from Russian gas strategically. And a major part of the solution is renewable energy. So against this macroeconomic and market backdrop, the outlook in the short term for sustainability related investing has been challenging and however, if we sort of, if we uh, stretch our horizon, if we think about the longer term outlook, there are a lot of reasons to be very positive. Uh, so the long term drivers of the energy transition remain well in place. So we're still expecting very, very significant increases over time um, in the proportion uh, of the energy mix uh, that is renewable and low carbon technologies. Um, similarly, um, we are expecting fossil fuel sort of usage um, to decline over the long term. A lot of the firms that are going to benefit the most from the energy transition, you know, have become cheaper. Uh, uh, and so for those that can stretch their horizons sort of think less about how markets are going to behave over the next six months and think about it on a two year, five year, even a 10 year time frame. If we sort of want to think a bit more granularly about the nature of the investment opportunities. There are some particular sort of sectors um, that probably stand out. Transportation is one of them. Um, we've seen the market penetration of electrical vehicles uh, sort of grow more quickly than, than forecasts, even sort of two years uh, has suggested. This is occurring across many markets. Um, we're seeing the policy drivers in the transportation sector move more quickly as well, and a lot of technological sort of change occurring. So we can be even more confident than in the past 
um, about the transportation sector sort of making sort of an energy transition over the next sort of 10, 20, 30 years. Indeed, sort of quite a lot of modeling would suggest that, that electrical vehicles in many, in many segments will break even um, with traditional ICE engines sort of within the next sort of five years. So that's one. Um, another sort of interesting one um, is to think about the future of nuclear energy. Well, as gold coal continues to be phased out, as the outlook for natural gas has become more cloudy because of the war in Ukraine, certainly in Europe, where they're sort of feeling less confident about wanting to rely on natural gas over the long term, um, the, the outlook for nuclear energy um, not just in sort of large installations, but also for small modular reactors is becoming more positive. Oh,